Hey family, do you feel it's time to make a shift in your life but have no idea where to start and can use some support? Well, the time has come. My Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, is officially open and this is your opportunity to start living the life that was designed specifically with you in mind. Strategize Your Vision is for you if you are finally ready to embrace your purpose and walk in your truth to impact the world. You are willing to do the work necessary to eliminate negative core beliefs that's blocking your progress. Or maybe you are simply ready to receive the blessings that has your name on them. Strategize Your Vision will teach you step by step how to develop a strategy that touches every area of your life to ensure your purpose and vision are in alignment. Family, you no longer have to do life alone because together we're going to get you clear on your purpose, write your vision plainly, and build a strategy for making your vision a reality. So if you're ready, I'm ready. So let's do the work together. All you have to do is visit strategizeyourvision.com to enroll today. First, let me say this, that what a champion woman is. Mm. Because you have to understand that in order for the, to for me to for you to understand how to have a champion woman mindset. Mm. A champion woman is not just you know everybody out here walking in a purpose trying to be this entrepreneur owner of businesses and things like that. It's not just about being an entrepreneur. It's about you accepting your truth, you accepting who you, God created you to be. Those are the type of women I'm talking about that, that has gone through challenges, have gone through heartaches and, and, and difficulties and people stabbing you in your back and people conning you and people doing all kinds of things. But you have taken those situations and used it for your good. Hey, 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 what up, what up, family? I am your girl, Erica Landy, motivational queen. And you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey, Erica, girl. Thank you so much for saying yes to have this conversation with me today. Girl, I'm super excited that you asked me to be with you on this Living Her Truth. I'm so excited. <laughs> girl, okay, you know you're my homegirl. You know you're yes. my homegirl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Um, I just, okay, be, okay, yeah. Before I start the conversation, because I was about to, girl, I was about to go ahead and just start talking. I like to start off every every conversation. We just talk about how I come to know the person that uh, I am speaking with. And um, man, Erica, how do we how do we connect? It's been so long. I feel like I've I've known you. For I long think ever. it was through Instagram. It was through it was through Instagram. I uh, first started my business. I ran across one of your your posts. And started following you on Instagram, and I was drawn to you because you're so high <laughs> energy, and I just, I just <laughs> love it. I just love it. And your intros, every time you come on, I just, I just love it. And so I was actually following you for a while before I reached out, mm -hmm. and um, you was probably you and Taikia are probably mm -hmm. the first two women I have ever reached out to on Instagram because right. I follow you guys for a while and I'm like, you know, reaching out like, hi, I'm Lakeisha. I would love to be yeah. your friend. I've been following you for a while. I would love to be your friend type thing. And both of you mm -hmm. guys was just like, yeah, bro, sure, oh. no problem. And you know, and the and the rest is history. The rest is right. History. <laughs> here we are here we are here we are i feel like we have grown so much with our businesses man definitely definitely you have evolved so much we were just talking right before we started recording the podcast just how life has just taken us in all different types of mm -hmm. of directions and Which that's what happens when you're walking in your purpose you know yeah. sometimes you will 
walk into that thing not knowing exactly which direction you're going you know what i mean mm-hmm. and sometimes when you're doing the right thing when you're doing what god has called you to do he's going to peel off more layers about you and that's where you know another business has popped up and i'm like what and this is supposed to i ain't supposed to be doing it <laughs> That's not what I signed up for, but you got to be confident and, and, and know that, you know what, God got me and I'm going to walk this thing through. Absolutely. And this is why I preach all the time that we have to have flexibility. We have yes. to have flexibility in these good plans that we have set for ourselves. Like there's nothing wrong with, with having a plan because God wants you to work towards something. But if mm-hmm. he sees you going in the wrong direction or maybe there's a better direction for you to go into, I'm going to need you to be flexible with mm-hmm. going, in those different, going in those different directions. But, you know, sometimes, you know, we get so like focused on how we want to get to our end goal that we we we, we ignore God, we like eh, da, 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 that type of thing because I want to go this way, like I don't want to go those ways, I want to go this way. But it's yeah, like because also when he's telling you to go a different way, it's uncomfortable, right? Ooh, girl, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. It's and you be like, no, like, no, I, I don't want to do that. But that's why I always say great things come out of uncomfortable places. So you have to be willing and able to listen to the voice of God and what he's telling you to do. And I always talked about this, you know, when you're walking in your purpose, you have to make sure that you're put, making making God the found, the core foundation of your purpose. Because if you try to walk that thing out on your own, you're going to be all over the place. You have to make sure, because he created you, right? You know, so one of the things that I do talk about too is as well is um, when God gives you that purpose and you make him the core foundation of that purpose, Mm -hmm. you have to be willing to say, I submit to his will. Hey family, so I just wanted to just pop in really quickly to tell you about my self-awareness coaching program because as Erica so eloquently stated that God created us and he needs to be the core foundation of how and why we operate in purpose. And I know she said a mouthful and you're probably thinking that sounds great. But how do I even do that? I don't, I'm not even clear on my purpose. Or through my self-awareness coaching program, I coach you through it. I coach my clients on self-awareness because I want you to give back to who God created you to be. The reason why you're not clear on what your purpose is, is because you have fallen far away from being the person God created you to be. And together, Together, we go on a journey to get you back to who he created you to be so he can be the foundation and so you can get clear in your purpose so you can surrender to God's will for your life and operate in purpose. If you need help on doing just this and if you prefer to have somebody who is willing to walk next to you, partner with you, on the journey, then I need you to go over to LakeishaWooder.com forward slash coaching so we can start working together today. You have to trust him in every area of your life, not just in your purpose, Mm -hmm. but in everything. Because in everything, even outside of that purpose, when you're operating in life, Mm -hmm. God is showing you something in that particular situation that's going to help you propel to the next level in your purpose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, that's good. (laughs) Hey, girl, why do you think you're on this podcast? Why do you think you're on this podcast? Yes, you know, honey. Because one of the, the reasons why I started following you in the first place is because you always talked about having a champion woman mindset. You know, because like you said, the different areas, one of those areas is is our mindset. You know, mm-hmm. like we have to get our our thoughts together. You know, first right. we got to get our, our hearts together, right? Because mm-hmm. our thoughts comes from what we really feel in our hearts. But, right. you know, our, our thoughts are so, 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 so important. And you talk about that, you know, mm-hmm. a lot, having that champion woman mindset, you know, mm-hmm. 
just real quick, break that down when you say, you know, champion woman mindset and um, talk about how self-awareness helps us to develop having that particular mindset. Okay. Okay. So first let me say this, that what a champion woman is. Mm. because you have to understand that in order for the, to for me to for you to understand how to have a champion woman mindset mm. a champion woman is not just you know everybody out here walking in a purpose trying to be this entrepreneur owner of businesses and things like that it's not just about being an entrepreneur it's about you accepting your truth you accepting who you god created you to be those are the type of woman i'm talking about that, that has gone through challenges have gone through heartaches and 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 difficulties and people stabbing you in your back and people conning you and people doing all kinds of things but you have taken those situations and used it for your good you have accepted your part in it even when somebody else is doing you wrong mm -hmm. we are quick to point the finger at someone else you know but you have to understand yeah that person was wrong mm -hmm. you know you have to forgive them and say okay what is it in that situation that i have to do to be better you know to be a better woman and so those are the type of things or characteristics that you need to understand in order for you to be a champion woman. A champion woman faces her truth and they are living her truth. You know what I mean? They're walking in it every single day. So that's what a champion woman is. Now to have that mindset, you have to take those situations and flip it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that's an easy thing to do because nine times out of 10, when somebody do you wrong, you hold them to it, you know? So um, one of the girls that I am very close with, Anika Stewart, she always talks about have your moment when you're in that situation or your heartache or difficulties and challenges. Have your moment, but don't stay there, you know? So you have to take those situations and look at yourself in the mirror. Now, I, I, I talked about this a few months ago um, and what brought me to this place is I was so heartbroken one time and in my life mm -hmm. and it broke me to the point where, you know how you cry and you're just at night, you're, you're, you're in so much pain. You can't sleep. I had to one time look at myself in the mirror and while I was crying, mm -hmm. That ain't pretty, right? You, ain't, you no, nobody cries a pretty cry. You know what I mean? There, there'll be tears of joy, but when you're in pain or somebody has hurt you, that that cry is an ugly cry. It's an ugly cry. But also, when you're looking at yourself in your in the mirror with that ugly cry, you're seeing the ugliness, everything come out. You know what I mean? You're seeing the truth come out. Mm -hmm. And you look at yourself and you're like, I don't like what I see. I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like where my life is. And you have to accept that. You know, not everybody is going to be doing it two days and three days and four days or whatever. It takes a month. It takes however long it takes for you to understand, okay, you know what? I can't do this no more. I'm tired of living my life with a negative mindset. God did not create me to have this type of life. And so the first thing that you must do is submit to God's will for your life. Let him love on you. Let him comfort you in that time. Let him show you who you truly are. Don't just go back to the same situation and still operate the same way because you're gonna get the same results. You're gonna be right back in the mirror, crying an ugly cry again, when God is trying to show you who you truly are to the core. And self-awareness, that's where that self-awareness comes in. When God starts starting to pour into you that love that some of us don't get, you know, from people. It's nothing like the love of God. When he loves on you and show you and encourages you and, and, and loves you so much mm -hmm. that your confidence, your spirit starts to build up. Mm -hmm. You know, your soul is, is being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So self-awareness, that's when you start realizing who you are. And you want to change those thoughts from a negative mindset to a champion woman mindset. Now, mindsets are formed. That's one thing that 
in my research, I found out that mindsets are formed from things that have happened in your past, right? So if somebody keeps telling you that you're ugly, somebody keeps telling you that you're not worth it all your life, you start to believe it. And so those types of mindsets are formed, but you have to start surrounding yourself with the right people who love you. You have the power to control what you allow to get close to you and allow to feed your spirit. If something is not right in your spirit with someone or a situation, you have the power to walk away because you know, especially when you're trying to increase your mindset and have that positive mindset, you have that power to do that. You just have to be willing and strong minded to walk into it. Mm-hmm. Man, it's so much truth to everything that that you just said, and I can relate to everything you just said one hundred percent because I, the only reason why I'm I'm here where I am today is because I literally had to create, like you said, that champion mindset. You know, growing up in the in the projects. All I heard, you know, when it came to to media, this is way before social media, but, you know, TV and, and radio, all I heard, the messages that I was getting was because, you know, my mom was 16 when she had me, because mm-hmm. I was, you know, growing up in the hood, that I was going to be another statistic. I was going to follow my mom's footsteps as far as, you know, not graduating from high school, getting mm-hmm. pregnant you know, at 16 years old, dating a drug dealer, you know, down the street or becoming a prostitute or whatever the case may be. Like the messages that I was getting was that I was doomed to fail. Right. I was a statistic before I was even born. Mm -hmm. I was counted out before I even took my first breath. Mm -hmm. And the messages that I received, you know, from media reinforced that. So, you know, after experiencing, you know, several different traumas in my life, because you don't grow up in a hood and not go through no trauma. Right. Let's start there. You just yeah, don't. You don't. You know, I took it upon myself to be an example of success for my siblings. But in mm-hmm. order in order to do that, because I'm first generation everything, mm-hmm. in order to do that, I had to pull motivation from somewhere. Right. And and at the time, since I didn't have a relationship with God, I pulled motivation from those same messages that was telling me that I was doomed to fail because right. I used that as motivation. Like, okay, this is what you're telling me what I'm going to do. Okay, now I have something to prove. So now, I'm not saying that this was the, the right way to go about. I'm not saying, you know, for someone else to, to do it. I'm just saying, start where you are. Right. You know, small changes mm-hmm. helps, you know, to, to create that champion woman mindset that Erica is, is talking about. So that's where I started. I started with, you know, I have something to prove, you know, this is what I'm hearing in one ear. So I'm about to do something, you know, totally different, you mm-hmm. know, because they said that, um, I probably get pregnant by 16. I'm gonna make sure I don't get pregnant by 16. Mm-hmm. Just because you're saying that I probably won't graduate from high school. I'm gonna make sure I graduate from high school. Right. You know? But as I got older, you know, my mindset changed and it started to change in a positive way, even more positive because I started to see, you know, fruits from the actions that I was taking. Uh I'm not going to say that it was the right moves at the, at the time. God was blessing my efforts. Right. God was just jump and I catch you. And I just jumped. Mm -hmm. And you guys, let me say it again. This is a time where I didn't even have a relationship with God. I didn't even Mm -hmm. know who he was. This was before I found him. He was Mm -hmm. making my efforts already. So even if you just start where you are and just make that first step, that first move, he's going to bless it. You don't got to be perfect. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Take that first step. He's going to bless it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. One of, my, one of my favorite um financial coaches, um, I Patrice Washington, I actually interviewed her here on the here on the podcast. So if you haven't heard that episode, definitely go back and check it out. She is episode number two, or maybe 
three. She's episode number three. And um, you can also catch the video on facebook.com forward slash living her truth. But one of the sayings that, you know, I'm probably going to butcher it, but she says all the time that we have to give God something to bless. Mm -hmm. She says that all the time. And so that's what it is that I'm, that I'm saying to, you know, those of you who, who are, who are listening. So Mm -hmm. if you need some type of advice on how to switch that negative mindset into a positive, use, use what you, what you've already heard that was negative and repurpose it. Right. Engineer it. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, start there until you start, you know, having the experiences that's going to help mm-hmm. to really mold and reshape your, your thinking. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Do you have any tips Absolutely. when it comes to that? Um, We're actually switching the mindset. I, I, I always say that you need to watch what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. You know, watch, watch who you're around, mm-hmm. watch what you're viewing. Um, when I started, um, walking in my purpose as a motivational speaker mm-hmm. and coach, and now social media uh, virtual assistant, um, I knew right away that I could not operate the old way in order for this to work. And so I knew that I had to surround myself around positivity, people that are doing um much better than where I was right now Mm -hmm. you know where I was then I'm sorry where I was then Mm -hmm. uh, I had to like I started following other speakers I started following other coaches on Instagram and because I wanted to be able to see positive all the time because that's what I needed even watching tv even to the things that I was listening to on the radio You have to change everything, your environment. You have to change your environment in order for you to shift. Because what I just say, you know, somebody can keep mindsets up for them. So those mindsets like limited beliefs and doubts, you know, that poured into you over in your past and it developed that mindset. So switch it up and do something different and let somebody else pour into you the right things and eventually you're going to get it you're going to have that type of mindset so you got to be careful what's around you i always say that you know even now to this day sometimes i catch myself watching something on tv that may not even be good for my spirit right then and there Mm -hmm. i'm like i don't need to be watching this because it's a distraction Mm -hmm. you know you got to make sure that you eliminate those distractions that's keeping you from walking in your purpose and have that mindset because if you keep listening to negative stuff and watching negative stuff you're going to have negative mindset you got to surround yourself every in every area of your life the people you're around and that means letting some people go Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you don't need that Mm -hmm. how are you going to actually think god is going to propel you to that next level when you still have that old stinking thinking you want it you want to go to that next level. You ready for that next level. You ready to walk into the destiny that God has placed over your life. But that means you need to shift the whole your, your whole environment. But you got to be ready. Mm-hmm. You got to be ready. Mm-hmm. People say all the time, I'm ready, I'm ready. But then they still operating, doing the same stuff. You can't do that. That's called change. People have to mm-hmm. get comfortable with embracing change. And a lot yes. of us. We don't want to, we, we don't want to because we like the comfortability that we have established, right? Because good we, right now. Mm-hmm. Because when you embrace change, that means that you have to be, you know, all right with the unknown. You have mm-hmm. to be all right with giving up, you know, total com- control and surrendering, like you talked about, um, like you talked about earlier. But and, and and what kills me is that people don't like some people don't mm-hmm. like to embrace change but it's like everything changes though like mm-hmm. everything changes everything right is constantly changing like you're not even the same person that you we we're not even the same women that we were you know 20 minutes ago 
exactly. Because we have changed just from having this, this conversation. So those of you who are listening to us right now and even watching us on Facebook, you're going to be a completely different person after, you know, watching and listening to this, this podcast. Absolutely. Episode. Every, Absolutely. Every change change is 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 something that's that's constant and consistent you know i was listening to the wall street journal um uh, on audible y'all know i'm addicted to audible yeah. so i don't just listen to books on audible i listen to the wall street journal on mm-hmm. audible as well um mm-hmm. quick side note if you guys are interested in audible wall street journal is is free with your audible subscription so Go to my website, LakeishaWooder.com forward slash podcast. And there's a link where you can sign up for Audible and you can get your free subscription of the Wall Street Journal. Just oh, okay. put that in there so I can help y'all out. Don't say check that out. Now back to our regular schedule program. <laughs> <laughs> so I was listening to the Wall Street Journal and one of the stories that was on there that was talking about um, executive assistants are disappearing that was the name of, of the story executive assistants are, are disappearing because you have you know the, the the older generation you know women and maybe men too but women in particular uh, that was talked about in this article who have been executive assistants for like decades and mm-hmm. now they're running into you know um to the to the fact that they're losing their jobs because of technology you know vps are no longer really having you know executive assistants because they're doing their you know they're doing their own thing or um virtual assistants like you are you know taking over um their positions because vps they're traveling a lot so they don't Mm -hmm. necessarily need you know an assistant you know in the you know, in the office. And because mm-hmm. these women, that's all they know, because that's all they've done for the past, you know, two decades, they're having a hard time finding, you know, finding a job. Now, I don't want to sound insensitive because, you know, I'm, I'm not. But my thing is, when I was listening to this, all, all, I kept thinking, well, why don't you just change with the times? Mm-hmm. The virtual assistance is the plug right now. Then be a virtual assistant. Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand, like, who don't want to work from home? Like, right. <laughs> I don't know anybody. Hello. Hello. Who don't want to work from home. So it's, it's like you need to change with the time. So, yeah, you see yourself out of a job because you're refusing to, you know, change with the times. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you may need to learn how to work Instagram or something like that. Right. You right. have to change with the time. So I say that to say that everything changes and we have to come up out of the mindset of not wanting to change. Because it's scary, mm-hmm. you know, because we don't know if the people around us is going to be okay when I change. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, some of the people won't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> some people mm-hmm. won't. Yeah. That's okay. You know, because the change is not for them, it's for you. Right. Right. It's, you know what? When you, when you talk about embracing change, I'm going to say this. People change what they want to change. Put it that way. Girl, don't make me choke on my... Oh my, my <laughs> they, they, they change what they want to change. Okay. When that update come in on your phone and there's some changes that go on, you make the changes, right? When Instagram stops showing you likes on your page, you ain't like it, but you you went on st- kept using it, right? When that when how about when we went from a floor model to floor model TVs to flat screens? Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, uh, cable has changed. Everything has changed, but you change, you go along with it because you like it. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to make sure I continue doing, you know, making sure that I know what to do on this TV and everything or Instagram or everything like that. You change what you want to change. But what about changing within yourself and that mindset? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why don't people do that? I don't mm-hmm. get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just... Uh unresolved trauma and i feel like a a broken record when i when i say this but this is real talk we are hurting on the inside there's a lot of us hurting right now and absolutely we're not addressing the hurt like Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be when when i say trauma you know i i know some people a lot of people know my story and so you probably think that I'm talking about trauma that's on that level, you know, trauma like in domestic violence or whatever. Again, mm-hmm. not to belittle, you know, domestic violence, but 
that's not the only form of trauma. Like mm-hmm. in October, 2018, I lost my brother. That was a traumatic mm-hmm. experience. Right. So for the first like seven, eight months, no, seven months of 2019, I was in this, this complete grieving process where I felt that I was, you know, slowly slipping into a depression. That's mm-hmm. a traumatic experience. Yeah. So when yeah. You're not dealing with the, the trauma, the unresolved trauma, the unresolved, the unresolved hurt, you know, the person that, that hurt you, like you talked about earlier, but you haven't forgave them yet. Right. So you're constantly poisoning yourself on the inside, you know, mm-hmm. because you just want to hold on to that. It's it's hard to have that champion woman mindset and embrace the change that you need to embrace when you are toxic on the inside. Right. And that toxicity is coming from hurt, unresolved hurt and trauma. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. From. I couldn't agree with you more i think i do believe a lot of us not just um with like you said domestic violence or anything any type of hurt that's caused you um damage to your soul mm-hmm. you're still holding on to that it's it's, it's not good because you're you holding on to it it's damaging your soul even more absolutely absolutely you know in the in the previous conversations to to this one we had some Ooh, we had some really deep, I had some really deep conversations. Like we talked about um, coming up out of a toxic marriage that, you know, that no longer served us. We talked about depression uh, and death mm-hmm. and overcoming suicidal thoughts. Like mm-hmm. situations like that tell us how can we, how do we nurture our mindset? Because when you go to those different types of experiences, it changes you. In mm-hmm. some way, some form, right? It changes you. Mm-hmm. We just talked about change. It changes mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. So how do we nurture our our mindset back to health after experiencing, you know, those traumatic experiences? I can only tell you what worked for me. Okay. You know, um, okay. my marriage ended quickly. I mean, I wasn't even married like two years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um and I decided, we, we decided to divorce. And um, after the divorce was final, you know, I was, when I'm going to be honest with you, when we de- decided to divorce, I was glad. I was like, oh, I'm divorced, finally done with this dude, you know? Um, but what happened was, my mom and dad has been married over 50 years. Wow. And so I have always seen um, long lasting relationships and stuff like that. I saw, I grew up with my father in the house and him working all the time. And my mom was a stay at home mom and she took care of us. So that's what I grew up around. I knew what it, what it meant for a man to be the man of the house and the woman to be the woman of the house. And, how um, my mom, now I don't, I, a lot of people don't like to hear this word, how my mom submitted to the man. I'm going to need you to say that again <laughs> for, the people, for the people in the background, because, <laughs> if you, if, because if you guys, we talked about submission and I forget what episode number it is, but it's my episode when I sat down and had a conversation with LB, go mm-hmm. back. And check out the episode that's Power in the P because we talked about submission in that mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So that's what I grew up around. Yeah, submitting to a man. And and my mom has always told me that people used to tell her, y'all are unequally yoked because my dad was not in the church. My mom was heavily in the church. And so eventually he started going to church and, and eventually... Uh, he was our ordained minister, you know, go figure, right? Somebody who used to gamble and do all drink and all that stuff, you know, so I didn't see none of that growing up. But what I saw was having a man in the house. And he, Girl, I'm over here. Y'all gotta watch this Facebook video because I'm over here like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm about to bust out into the, into the, into the Holy Ghost because what if your mama will listen to everybody? 
Yes. You don't know what God has in store. Right. Your, your dad probably had to go through all that so he could be able to minister to the young boys coming behind yes. him one day yes. and minister. Because we relate more to people who know what we go through. Mm-hmm. Come on, come mm-hmm. on, somebody. Yep. Went, went through his whole little journey, right? That's a, that's right. A, so we can see a part of us in him. So we can mm-hmm. know that, you know, Jesus has suffered just like we have. So he yep. can understand what we're going through. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I saw. You know, that's what I grew up around. And so I felt like, you know what, Erica, you listen to what everybody else was saying. Because I was so busy calling my friends. Girl, he done did this. Girl, he done did this. You, and I divorced him. And I was like, I gave up too quickly on my marriage. So we began to talk again. I, even the papers were signed and everything. We began to talk again. And then he came back. And I let him back. Come back home. And he proposed to me again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that is when all hell broke out. You know, and it's something to say when a woman goes through something like for for a woman for me it was a I was a woman that went through a something a divorce and believed that in my heart I gave up too quickly and you let this person back in and they do you dirty again that that hurt me even more Jennifer. and I had to just this then the first time right and so that's what I was so hurt about I was like, I can't understand why we talked about these situations and the issues that we were going to work on but you continue to do me dirty I couldn't understand it and that so he kept telling me, you know, I kept questioning him about certain things. And of course he he would say, uh, you're insecure. You're tripping. You, you, you're, you're, you're imagining things. Speaking of which, somebody telling you stuff, you see the movie, uh, a fall from grace. Actually I did. When I saw your Instagram post, I was like, that's right. Thanks for reminding me, girl. And I went and I watched it on Netflix. I meant to yes. hit you up and let you My know. story is similar to hers, but except I didn't kill nobody or go that far. Girl, stop but, playing. Really? Yes. So that story is kind of similar to mine where the man comes in and woos you mm-hmm. and you and then they start still I had people stealing from my husband stole from me money and I couldn't pay bills because money that was supposed to be there that wasn't there so I could relate to that story in that sense the money being gone you losing your job you losing stuff so I had that so that's that's the hurt I was feeling how could somebody love you so much but yet they do that who is this man you know so for me after to make a long story short after all of that I decided I need help um, I had gotten involved in another relationship and mm-hmm. then I started doing the same thing, operating the same way mm-hmm. with, with my, my ex-husband. I started doing that. And he was like, why are you acting like this? And I realized then and there, I was still hurt from the divorce. So I decided I need help. I went to the counselor and we talked, not just about the divorce, but everything in my life. So it brought a lot of things out, how my mom, how I thought my mom felt about me, how my parents looked at me, how people looked at me because of this divorce, how growing up being the baby of the family um, changed me and who I was. So it was a lot of things that came out in that session um, that I didn't even realize that I was hurting, hurting about. So I I highly recommend people for you to nurture, for you to want that change and you want to change from that negative mindset, that trauma that has caused you so much pain in your life. It's okay to get help. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not the first person. You're not going to be the last person, but you have to admit, I need help. 
and go to somebody and talk to somebody and let them see things that you probably can't even think or see, you know, about yourself. It makes you realize a lot of things about yourself. So that's what worked for me was counseling. And I started writing little stickies around the house. I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I am loved. I am a child of God. I am beautiful. I am confident. I had stickies all over my house, girl. Mm -hmm. Stickies everywhere. And then that's when I started feeding my spirit more and more. And that's when God revealed his, my purpose to me. Hmm. Hmm. so you have to nurture it like that's what worked for me was hmm. counseling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that thank you so much for sharing that because um, I didn't know that you hadn't shared that with me um, before thank you so much for for sharing that and you know uh, until you was able to ex you know acknowledge that trauma because mm -hmm. that's a traumatic experience Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what you went through that's another example prime example of a traumatic experience and you needed to address that and get the help so you can change your attitude right. how you move your beliefs and things like that because that experience changed you mm -hmm. you know in in some form or some form or fashion and right. for those of you who are who are listening or watching us on Facebook and you're probably thinking, oh, that was so long ago. And, you know, I, I don't need to go to therapy for that. I want to encourage you to go anyway. Y'all mm -hmm. know, if you have listened to me for any length of time, even within the probably last five minutes, you know how I feel about therapy. You know, right. therapy is key. Therapy was crucial for me um, when I started my transition from victim to survivor of sexual abuse. But Therapy is so key, and I wanted to 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 just bring home the fact that you know it's, it's never too late to go, and you're mm -hmm. never too old to go. And mm -hmm. recently, because like I said, the first nine, first six seven months of 2019, I was grieving the death of, of my brother. So at right. some point, I went back to therapy because I'm like my normal self care routine, my normal right you know, structure routine that I will you know that that kept me for so long that helps me bounce back. It wasn't working. Mm -hmm. my, my normal tools wasn't working. So right. I it's time for me to, you know, to get back into therapy. And so mm -hmm. uh, my therapist has helped me out a lot and I'm still going to therapy right now because right. now we're going to address all of the other trauma that I have mm -hmm. experienced because, mm -hmm. you know, my first round of therapy, we only focused on the sexual abuse because that was, you know, the prevalent, you know, at the time. Right. 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 So I've only had therapy as it relates to sexual abuse, but not for, the the other trauma mm -hmm. in in my life so mm -hmm. um i'm excited and i'm scared all at the same time this is a safe place mm -hmm. right so right judgment. so i'm i'm scared and i'm excited all at the same time because right. i'm scared because you know i'm about to talk about some things that i've never talked about before and mm -hmm. i'm excited because it's, it's like finally i get the chance to like talk about it um, mm -hmm. because I realized that where I am right now, I need to grow. And in order for me to, to grow, I need to really dig deep and talk about the other traumatic experiences that I've right. had, you know, because it's, it's blocking me, you know, in some way, form, if I, in fashion, mm -hmm. I would tell you how it is, but maybe I come back because me and the therapist, we're going to work on it. So I don't know the answers right. right now, but I can feel it though. I, I can right. feel that there's a blockage there. So right. that was, um, that was, it's a, it's a relief. It's a release too. When you, is. when you talk about those things that has caused you trauma. Um, and there's freedom in that. You know, when you release that stress, when you release everything that has is holding you down and holding you hostage, you know, mm -hmm. um, when you talk about, about those things, it's like your wings start to, you know, flutter a little bit, you know, and you get a chance to, you can feel like a weight has been lifted off. Mm -hmm. For me, that's what it was. And it was like, okay, you know what? I'm free from this. 
I'm free from anything that has caused me hurt and pain. I can I can walk in my truth. Yeah, that happened to me. And to be honest, you know, I'm good now. It's like talking about it, maybe some, you know, because sometimes when you're talking about it and you're talking about it with such conviction to somebody else, they'll probably think she's still hurting over that thing, you know? But no, it's not. It's 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 a way of releasing more, you know, uh, pain that could be still residing there. Mm. Talk about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I couldn't suggest it anymore. Just you guys to see somebody, talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. about it and don't be afraid to be vulnerable don't be afraid to to don't don't go in there thinking of they're going to look at you and judge you because of the what of what you experienced of what you have been through in your life no they're not it's like you said this right now is a safe place i don't feel like you're judging me i don't feel like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. um that i can't open myself up because even in this conversation, it's therapy in this conversation. Yes. You know, yes. so we, I'm, I'm being healed as we speaking now, you know, from something that I may not even realize that's going on I st- right I now. I stand in agreement with you, sister. I stand in agreement with you that you are being healed <laughs> from this conversation. Because there's healing in conversation. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, one of the reasons why I enjoy this this platform so much and this is the reason why we need to share our stories and share our testimonies you know because the bible says there's nothing new up under the sun and Mm -hmm. i believe that that includes you know the devil's tactics to kill still and destroy you right. know, our, our hopes and dreams and, and our and our faith so whatever tactic he's tried to use on me guess what that means he's going to try to use those same old tactics on you right. so if i can overcome them you can too but how yeah. will our fellow sisters know if nobody is willing to share now mm-hmm. and i'm not saying to share prematurely because i want you right. to share you know, when you're ready and when you're healed enough to share. Mm-hmm. The last thing I want you to do is have a setback, but, you know, share when you're ready. It's definitely nothing that you should you know, feel ashamed of. And if right. someone tries to make you feel ashamed of it, you know, that's their problem, not yours, because that's that's an issue that they have with themselves, something that, you know, they're holding on to that they haven't, you know, dealt right. with. And mm-hmm. it's probably just envy because, you know, you're able to um, acknowledge and and get the help that you need. And that person is probably in a position where they want to, but they're mm-hmm. just too afraid to do so, or they just don't know right, right now, you know? Right, so exactly. That thing. Yeah. So they protect it. So, but girlfriend, I 100% enjoyed you in this conversation. <laughs> Thank you for having me, honey. Absolutely. You Thank are you for having you are me. Amazing. You were the perfect person to have a conversation about mindset because yeah. you know, we've had some amazing conversations and you know, one of the common denominators um last week we talked about building a support team because that mm-hmm. was a common denominator with all the episodes is just having a support team um, right. crucial for operating your purpose. Absolutely. But, you know, another common denominator too is mindset because at the mm-hmm. end of the day, anytime any one of the women that I have spoke to in these last few months, when they talked about the change that they implemented in order to, you know, have the, the success and the breakthroughs that they've experienced, mindset change was in there yeah it's key it's key it's key it's key key. so you gotta want it you gotta want it Mm -hmm. you gotta want it um i i i I tell people all the time it's like i can sit here and tell you what you need to do and coach you through it but when you get home you got to be the one to implement that stuff Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and you have to be ready to make the change Absolutely. And that's, and that's why I tell my clients too, all the time in my self-awareness coaching program is that, you know, I can give you the tools, but you have to implement it. You know, it's, it's one thing to receive the knowledge. It's a whole nother thing to like put it into action.
action. Um, you know, when I sat down and had a conversation with Kia, we talked about self-awareness, I mean, self-care and what that looks like. And we talked about how, you know, it's, it's starting to become more popular and common, if you will, to, to go to therapy, which is a great thing, right? right. Because way right. back in the day, but ugh, therapy, uh-huh. no, no, that's what happening. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's people are, are warming up to the idea and, you know, going to therapy. It's, but, it's, it's become, becoming so relevant now because mental health is a huge yes huge thing now in 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 this decade well last decade too but now it's coming more um exposed you know and people understanding that mental health is a issue you know it is it is but when you go to the therapist and get help whatever tools that you learn in that session or whatever tools that they give you in that session you have to put them in practice Mm-hmm. You have to put them in practice. So, you know, whatever breakthroughs that you had in, in therapy, when you walk out and you didn't have a breakthrough, there should have some type of change should have happened. And you mm-hmm. need to immediately go into effect. Because you don't, it, it does nothing to go to therapy, have a breakthrough, then you go home and you right back in the same situation that you was in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? I suggest getting an accountability partner. Get somebody that you trust and you love and they love you for who you are. Mm-hmm. and let them hold you accountable for your actions and, and ha- share with them hey this is what was discussed in my therapy session um can you help me um stay on track with having that positive champion woman mindset what is there anything that i can get involved in that will you know change your normal routine you yeah. know from doing the normal so maybe you should get your accountability partner um and somebody can hold you accountable to the things that the therapist had told you to do and absolutely home. absolutely and another uh another way you can change up your routine too is by you know reading books or listening to audible Do or you- listening to this podcast or listening to this podcast <laughs> absolutely. Do you, what's what's your favorite um uh, book or audible book that you would recommend that um, you have read or listened to that changed you know that changed or inspired your life uh it's a book from Sarah Jakes um, called Don't Settle for Safe. Mm-hmm. Um, that that book, book, that book changed my life. Not only did that, not only that book that changed her, my life, but her preaching, I think it was her first sermon in her dad's church. Um, that's what broke me and made me understand what my purpose and my calling was over my life. Mm-hmm. But in that book, you know, she talked about, you know, women, feeling like they're disqualified because of their pains and their past. And she talks, she empowers them into, to letting them know, Hey, your past does not define you. And that doesn't block you from all that God has for you. So stop selling for safe. You know, don't, don't just think that, that your past is your past. And that's just how it's going to be, Mm -hmm. you know, and you think, Oh, this is life. This is how it's supposed to be. No, no. Just because you had a child at 14 years old, that doesn't predict your future. God has so much more in store for you. That situation had to happen in order for you to be the woman that you are today. You know, anything that has happened in your life, you have to understand that. Stop settling for safe in that safe zone because greatness does not come out of you being in that safe zone. You have to come out, hit the gate and go. Mm-hmm. And understand, okay, this situation is not going to stop me from being great. This situation is not going to stop me from being a champion woman and having the mindset and the, mm-hmm. and the knowledge and the learning, the resources that's available to me. It's not going to stop me from being God, who all, all that God has called me to be. Mm-hmm. We had to understand that he created you with a purpose. He created you with greatness. He created you beautiful, loving, wonderful, kind, all of those things. That's who you are. So stop selling for safe. Get out that safe. I'm telling you, it's the, that book changed my life. If you, you know, know you the third person on the podcast who have suggested the book. So if you are listening and you have been <laughs> listening or binge watching on Facebook, I'm going to need you to click the link to the, uh, 
to the Audible recommendations and get the book. I have get listened to book. it too on on Audible, and it's and it's a great book. And y'all about to make me listen to it again because I know, right? And is that something that recommendation? Just because you read the book, don't mean that you can't read it again. Because right. sometimes, sometimes you're gonna hear something that you didn't hear the first time. That's just like any sermon that you hear on on Sunday morning. And, and the preacher may preach the same thing that he preached last year, but it may be something in that sermon that you didn't get last year that you're gonna get this year. So mm-hmm. it's nothing wrong with reading books over and over again. Absolutely, and 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 it also depends on where you are in life, you know, because change right we, we talked about change we are constantly changing so you know when you read the book the first time you know it hit you one way but depending on what new season you're in when you read a second time you're going to see it a completely different way you're going to learn something completely new exactly. so so yeah i mean we should read the book over and over again i also mm-hmm. uh, encourage people to you know read my book over and over again and mm-hmm. to help with that i'm going to start doing um, book clubs where we sit down and we discuss my book because my book is 31 days of truth manifest your passion power and perseverance it's one of those books where you can read it three four times a year if that's what you need to do or right. you know pick a chapter and read it you know once a day depending on what it is that you're going through mm-hmm. because life don't stop throwing you curveballs believe exactly. me i've tried exactly. to block the curveballs and turn them off they don't stop mm-hmm. coming they ain't gonna come oh. it ain't gonna stop them stop them from coming believe me and they come for a reason it's necessary everything that happens to you is necessary because god is shaping you and molding you in that challenge in that difficulty for you to be able to be the person because you can't go to that next level thinking the same way and operating in the same way that you are so that challenge had to come that challenge had to had to happen in your life so he can prepare you because you want what you know we we walk around here and say okay i want this i want to be successful i want to have this many clients but are you ready for them? for real you know so sometimes god will shake things up a little bit and see okay let me see if she's truly ready you know and, and not just physically ready but mentally ready yes can, can your can your marriage handle the additional yes. the additional low like you know, like can the relationship that you have with your children handle you know god put more on your plate like there's a reason okay. why he takes you through or allows you to go through certain seasons so you can prepare for yes that next for that next level get your right. house in order <laughs> And again, for the people in the background, get your house in your order. House in order. <laughs> right, get your that's house what we say. Work. You know, I want a husband. I want a husband. You know, a lot of women say that. But do you have your house in order? I ain't just talking about your physical house, but I'm talking about your house within here. Mm-hmm. Get your house in order. Get your mm-hmm. heart right. Get your mind right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all of that all of that you know and we need to get our house in order even when we just said new year's resolutions we need to get our house in order because right. whatever resolution that you didn't set at the top of the year i don't care if you're paying off debt losing weight buying a new car yeah, yeah. you need to get your house in order in all mm-hmm. areas of your house and in, in your life you need to get it mm-hmm. in, get it in order and Absolutely. people don't and people don't do that you know they don't do that that's why i created online they don't want to put in the work mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why, that's why I did that. So, last question before I let you go. <laughs> yes, <ma'am. laughs> last question. If you guys okay. are in, in that class, go to strategizeyourvision.com. I'll leave a link below as well. But, last question When describing the meaning of living your truth, what is your third word when you hear self awareness, purpose, and what will be your third word? Destiny. Ooh. I love yeah, self awareness. You become who you are, and you know who you are. Your thoughts have changed. You, you, yeah. you nurture those thoughts. You nurture that nurture that mindset. It can lead you to your purpose. Because what happens is you start realizing who you really are to the core. Mm-hmm. In, in self-awareness, in true self-awareness, you start realizing who you are to the core. And that mm-hmm. will open up the opportunity for purpose to be revealed to you. And that will lead you to the destiny that God has placed over your life. Mm. I love that. 
destiny. Sounds perfect. You're the best, sis. Thank you so much. You, I love you so much. Thank you for being so supportive and patient Aww. with me. Of course. And I love what you're doing. I I hope and pray that God continue to bless the plans that he has for your life and your business so that you can be successful in carrying those out, carrying that plan out. Thank you. I received that. I love you too.